Hey guys, hope you're all well. Uh, just a little midweek catch up, really. It's been a busy week so far, and I am catching up and getting things gone out the door. So I've got another frame done and gone. Got two dummy oil tanks for people doing their own projects all done and gone. So yeah, it feels good to catch up. Uh, I've had a few other things going on, which I'll show you in a moment. You'll see I've got two silencers here and a, a BSA gearbox, which I'll, uh, I'll go through in a bit, the gearbox. Anyway, these two silencers. Um, I've had this one come today. This one came a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, whatever it was. One was 20, 25 pounds. And one was about 45 pounds, so yeah. And it's, uh, I was interested to see the difference in them. This one is scrap, the 20 odd quid one. It wouldn't have been, but the, the wonderful Royal Mail seems to have used it for a hammer. <laughs> so when it came, it was poorly packed, to be honest with you. And as soon as I seen the package all ripped up, I thought, oh no, here we go. And yeah, to my horror, it is battered, which is a shame. I mean, I've been fully refunded for it, so it doesn't matter as such. But I don't know what they were doing with it. Because <laughs> it, it, it's quite thick material. It literally looks like it's been used to... <laughs> <laughs> to bash nails in or something <laughs> as you see it's no longer round at the end as long as you can see that so yeah it's scrap but they've kindly refunded me no no question no argument they refunded me the money so that was the 20 whatever quid it was 25 quid i think it was and this one was let's say 45 not a lot of difference in them really i can guess where they probably both came from what part of the world as a lot of stuff is but they're not bad I'm not sure if they're getting manufactured in the same place they have got slight differences as in the mounting rail on the cheap one is longer and on the cheap one the brackets are drilled out and the baffles are probably not quite as good inside the cheap one as they are the more expensive one. Chrome, to be fair, is pretty good on them both. You'd certainly put it on your bike, that's for sure. Obviously, if it wasn't battered. Chrome is pretty damn good on both of them. This one, it, it does, it feels a tiny bit heavier actually. But this one being the more expensive one, the baffles just look a better quality in there. It looks like it's built slightly better, but externally, if that wasn't battered, you would not tell the difference. Quality of chrome and everything. That one's slightly longer. Yeah, that one is actually slightly longer look, the cheaper one. Yeah, it's probably 20 mil longer, which makes no difference for these M fields at all. So yeah, that would have been quite a saving actually if it weren't battered, but they seem to have run out of stock and my only other option was this more expensive one. And as I want to just get on with the work, I've just got it. So this will be going on Steve's M field, sat in front of me here. And... Uh, all I've got to do is shape the bracket up. I think it's better with no holes in the way I fit these. So yeah, that'll be going on there. So there you go. The difference between, let's say 25 and 45 is nothing, to be honest. Slightly longer, slightly longer fixing bracket. That is it. Yeah. 
I would have been, uh, to, you know, I would have been happy with that one. More than happy if it wasn't to uh, been used for a hammer by somebody in the Royal Mail. <laughs> anyway, let's slide this one on. So all I'll do then is literally bend that bracket. This bracket will then be fixed to the frame and it'll be all powder coated with the frame. And obviously it'll bolt on <clears throat> to the little rail there on the back of the silencer. There we go. Sorted. They're just a real simple design. And I think it's they really suit the bike. So yeah, just that bracket then, and that's the exhaust system done on that, apart from my cooling ring up the top there. Right, what else we got? Well, obviously, <coughs> I'll keep that bracket actually. And I think I'll keep that clamp, you never know. That is scrap. That rattling you can hear inside is just like the reducers that they come with in case you're fitting them to a smaller pipe. So obviously gone and dropped inside. No, we don't need it anyway. So yeah, that's scrap. That'll go in the scrap bin. Like I say, I've been refunded for it anyway. But the difference in price, the, the quality of each one's pretty good, really. Right, next we've got this gearbox bsa so yeah mark who brought the uh, turbo over for the gsx he uh he's got this little bsa which we're trying to get roadworthy again and so he can just have a as, as a bit of fun so previously he used this little bsa all the time literally went everywhere on it and just basically rode it into the ground <laughs> Mark does some riding, he really does. He, he's out in all weathers, he commutes on his bikes and just literally goes everywhere on them. So we're just trying to turn this into something that's usable again and probably a little bit safer. So the gearbox that was on it, it's exactly the same as this one, but it is completely worn out. Uh, we was thinking about opening it up and try and refurbish it, but I spotted this online, thought, you know what, well, that's going to be an easy, quick fix. It, it, yes, it was quite expensive, but we just take that one out, bolt this one in, done. And if I do get time, I'll probably open the gearbox up that's on it and see how bad it is internally. <laughs> it, it is quite worn, I'll show you in a minute. So that'll be going in when the bike's getting built back up. So what we've done on that so far, which I've been doing this week as well, is we've changed the front end on the bike. It did have uh, a BSA front end in there with the tiny half width up with the real small brake on. And Mark had absolutely no joy with the brake at all. And this was his idea to put an Enfield front end in with the twin leading brakes. And you know, you set these up right and they're, they're pretty good. It, it, more than good enough to stop this bike. It's probably some of you, why didn't you put disc brakes on it and all that? I, I'm just going with what Mark wanted at the end of the day. You know, I don't want to sit here and argue with him and everything and what should go on his bike. He's just, that's what he requested. So that's what I'm doing. So I had to have a good mess about with all the uh, the yokes and bearings and everything it's actually still got the bsa bearings i managed to turn a few things down in the lathe so the front end would work the enfield front end would work with obviously the bsa frame so i've managed to do all that this is just mocked up at the moment it's uh just, just basically to prove that i could sort it out and make the enfield front end fit as you can see it's got these shrouds with the headlight brackets on at the moment. This is not going to run any lights. So 
the, and that's how it was. It's basically just a fun bike he uses in the daytime, goes down the road or he'll turn off the road and go down a few dirt tracks on it. It's just, you know, I say, it's just a fun bike. So at least now he'll be able to stop because he did tell me a few stories where he's uh, sort of overshot jun junctions and that because he couldn't stop the damn thing. So at least now it'll be safe. Like I say, we've got a bit more messing about to do with shrouds and stuff. I've got some little short shrouds that go here to hide sort of this bottom yoke part here. And then the, uh, the rubber gaiters go up inside the, the shrouds. I've just got to find them. I know I've got some. I've just got to find them in this chaos that this shed's turned into. Uh, we did sort of bodge the seat on. And I do say bodge because that's what we've done. But I'm going to move all that back. I've got to sort the mounting points of the seat and move it all back because the tanks, I just can't bring the tank back enough to miss the headstock at the minute. So I'm going to break all that back off and move it all back. And we're going to tidy the mud guards up, tidy the back wheel up, possibly take some lugs off the frame that are not being used. I believe it needs a new clutch, which we'll sort out. Uh, the little speedo that's going on it. Where's that? Let me find that. <coughs> so yeah, it's a little Smith's D-shaped speedo. I believe it all works. I don't know. So we'll make a little bracket for that and get that about there. These bars are just I've just thrown them on just so I can push the bike about. They're pro probably not going to be the ones that I'll end up with. I'll say this. I think these bars are actually on Steve's Enfields, but I've just thrown them on this to, I'll say, so I can push the bike about. So we'll make a bracket for this. Mark, obviously when he can, will be paying a visit. And then we can go over a few more details on this as to what he wants and how he wants it. But uh, that's probably one of the biggest jobs done making that Enfield front end fit but it should be a lot better actually like I say this was never ever an original bike it was literally built from parts that is sourced from auto jumbles and, and places like that and just completely built it out of parts it had I think I'll get this right previously it had the M20 engine in here which is actually sat in my back shed which was completely worn out same as the gearbox that uh, it's got a little bit of play in it <laughs> i have no clue how the bike kept running <clears throat> see the plane that gearbox the and the engine that was in it there's about as much playing all the bits on that engine as well so yeah, he got his use out of it. He got his money's worth. So he's obviously he bought this engine. This engine is supposed to be spot on. So fingers crossed with the, uh, the new gearbox, we're gonna be putting together a good usable little bike. And I like it. I like it. He's gonna have some good fun on it again. Like I say, it's not original, so if people are going to get all, oh, you shouldn't have that front ending. This, this is Mark's bike, not mine. I'm just doing what he wants, doing to it. He, all he wants is just be able to jump on that and go for a ride. He'll probably go to work on it each day for a while. I don't know. But I know he, he, he will use it daily, probably. So, yeah, it's not going to be any big, fancy, full-on custom build. We're just tidying it all up and giving it a new lease of life so we can use it. So yeah, that's, like I say, that's also what I've been doing this week. Dan's bike, as you can see back there, I'm not being able to throw it outside today because of the weather, especially because it's all in bare metal at the minute. I'm getting some samples from the powder coaters and probably posting them to Dan so we can have a look at the colors because he's got certain colors in mind that he wants all this and he's he obviously that's again that's down to him so as soon as i've got them down to him we will be taking that apart because that's at a stage where it is ready to come apart 
obviously we got the uh, the special sticker bike, which as you know will is going to evolve with the other two builds. <clears throat> I haven't done much to that. In fact, I've done nothing to it this week because I've been catching up with other things. But <clears throat> probably Friday I'll be doing a bit to this and Steve's bike behind us. The GS, I've made up my mind about the seat now. So you'll see that in the next video, what I'm going to do. I'll, it's going to be a fairly simple way of doing it, but it's going to look the part. So that's probably the next video. There we go. And obviously I've got the other Enfield to fire together. The other customer one, that's all about ready to put together. So I've got another, I'll basically have another bike in here rolling around. I've also been um, having a big clear out as well. So yeah, the week's been really busy up to now. So behind this shed, I've got another shed. I think it's eight foot by 10 foot. So it's this shed, a big gap, then another shed. So what I've thought, <laughs> changing my mind again, is if I clear all that shed out, because it literally is just a dumping ground for everything <clears throat> to save it cluttering up space in here. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's a lot of stuff in there that's just not needed. You know, you, you get all these things, oh, I might use that, and you know, I'll go and throw it in the back shed and it just piles up and piles up and piles up till you can't even get through the door. That's how that shed had got yet again. <laughs> I've cleared that back shed out that many times I've lost count. So I've got all the scrap out of there now. I've got all the scrap piled up ready to be collected. And I'm just going to go through everything. I'm going to possibly order a skip so I can just dump loads of rubbish and just get it cleared because I think I'm actually going to extend this shed that way because there's quite a lot of space behind here. I might venture out and show you in a minute. It's a bit of a mess out there. <laughs> So you just have to ignore that because I've been sorting everything. But I'm thinking of taking the shed down that's back here and just filling the whole space with this shed, extending it out and having a little doorway there. And then at least days like this where I can't throw bikes outside that are in bare metal and stuff, they can go in there. And I've still got all my working space in here then. I'll probably still do a lean-to that way so I can also have stuff out there under the lean-to where it's safe from the weather so yeah it's, it's been busy i have cleared tons of rubbish and scrap out got mark's bike well and truly on the way got some little bits of metal cut ready to do some color samples for dan been ordering all stuff for the next few enfields or the electrical side of it. I've got some more electrical stuff that's on its way for Dan's bike for when I've got that stripped down and we're doing the engine. We've got stuff coming for the other two enfields. So yeah, it's all it's all getting it's all catching up. It's feeling good. I'll say I've got frames out of the way, I've done my old tanks out of the way, all gone. Stuff coming for these. So yeah, it's been it's been a busy week. It feels good. That um Having that terrible virus sort of put me about six weeks behind. So yeah, we, we're well and truly catching up now, which is good. Let's go and have a look in the, the yard. <laughs> it's a mess, so just ignore it for now. Into the wide, wide world. Well, the rain stopped. Yeah, ignore all the mess. Poor old KTM's out in the rain. Ah, oh, that's what it's built for, don't matter. So yeah, I've been, as you can see, there's the, the back shed. And there's this big gap here. <clears throat> so I'm thinking of continuing with this all the way to the fence. And this shed coming down. As you can see, I've been going through everything. <laughs> Mr. Scrapman's coming for this at the weekend, I think. In here. <clears throat> There's a Ural there, look. <laughs> That's getting done, don't get on to me. 
as you can see, it's a bit of a dumping ground. <laughs> it is a mess. It, like I say, it's just one of them places where I just keep throwing stuff in here. But beginning of the week, you couldn't even get in the door. It was literally piled up to the door. So I've just got to go through the rest of it now. There's probably some stuff here I'll probably throw on eBay. I know there's loads of BSA Bantam parts all down here on the shelves. There's Suzuki parts, Honda parts, Enfield parts, BMW parts, you name it. <laughs> there's all sorts in here I'll probably never ever use. So yeah, that's the plan, is to get this completely cleared and tucked down and then we'll just extend the other shed. So yeah, you can see more the messy side of things. But that's, so that's six foot. And it's about two foot. So I gain eight foot by 12 foot with this coming down. And then this side, off the top of this one, do a lean to, and then I can get rid of this stupid tent that the wind keeps trying to take down. So there we go, there's my messy yard. Let's get back in the warm. Oh, it's blowy out there, because through ya. So there we are, it's in a bit of a mess, but it was better than what it was Sunday when I started it all. So hopefully the, the scrap man will be here, take all them barrels and everything out of the way, then I can clear the next stage of that shed out. And hopefully, over the next few weeks, in my little bits of spare time, not that I'll get many sp minutes of spare time, that'll be clear. Then I'll probably just take the shed down and give it to somebody and go and buy a van full of wood and extend that that way. But that's, you know, it's not going to happen straight away. It'll be just done as and when I can get to it. So there we go. There's a little catch up. <laughs> of the crazy week so far but stuff's getting done and that's all that matters so yeah big thank you again to everybody who's bought a special sticker for the Enfield build that is very very much appreciated and I'm really looking forward to getting on with all three Enfields together I'm, lo I'm looking forward to that uh, Big thank you to everyone also who buys the merchandise. That is very much appreciated as well. It all helps keeping the wheels in motion in here and it's very, very much appreciated. So yeah, if, if any of you still want a sticker, all the information for everything, t-shirts, the sticker thing, the PayPal link for, to buy the sticker, it's all in every description below every video so there we go anyway i'm going to shut up i'm going to go and carry on with some proper work now and um, the next video will probably be the seat on the gs so that's it cheers for watching guys take care <laughs>